Hi. You can hear me. You're magic. Like me. I don't know about magic. I always called it The Shining. Oh, no. I have chills. That music, that was a scene from Stephen King's Doctor Sleep, the upcoming film based on Stephen King's sequel to his acclaimed 1977 novel, The Shining, where we follow the now grown Danny as he learns to come to terms with his uh, traumatic childhood, his extra sensory gift, uh, thanks to a team named Abra, uh, who also shares this power. Kylie Coran, who plays Abra, joins us now in our spotlight. Welcome. Thank you. I am so happy you're here. For anyone who is not familiar with The Shining or Dr. Sleep, uh, make sure everyone understands what exactly is The Shining. Well, The Shine's kind of, telep it's telepathy, clairvoyance, and telekinesis. People can control things with their mind, communicate through the mind, and generally do super cool things with their minds. Generally super cool. Yeah. It's a gift that is actually shared by you and mm -hmm. Ewan McGregor, who yep. I love. <laughs> um, but uh, not everyone who has The Shining is actually nice, mm. uh, thus the plot of the film. So yes. tell us more about the other characters and really what they're trying to accomplish in the film. The True Knot. Well, um, the True Knot are a wandering group of travelers that are seeking out immortality. They suck out the essence or the shine from mostly children Ugh. because the shine's most present in them. And they target Abra, so that's where the, the plot starts to thicken. Exactly, and that's where the relationship, and if you've seen The Shining, and I know our audience has, uh, one of the scariest movies I remember growing up watching, um, you know, it, then you know the impact that it has now that he is older, mm. and to be able to connect with you on this level, and then, of course, fight the bad guys. Mm. Um, what was it like for you filming such a scary movie? Is that a kind of genre that you like? I love horror so much, it's <sighs> my favorite. So it was a really nice challenge, because I went from theater, this bright and bubbly theater yes. stage to this dark and disturbing set. It was amazing, actually. It was so much fun. Any nightmares? Well, <laughs> after I read the book, definitely, I had, oh, I just felt sick to my stomach reading about the true knot. Uh, right yeah, bet. there were some disturbing thoughts, yeah. And what about seeing the actual original movie? Because did you make sure, did you want to do that or did you not and kind of want to just keep it pure with the book? Well, um, I've seen the movie four times. For the first time was right before the callback for research purposes. Oh, good. Yeah. And my mom actually said, no, I'm not watching that with you. She and did. That's like me. Yeah. Um, and I was hiding behind my dad's back the whole time. And you know what scared me the most? It's hilarious. The title cards. Tuesday, Saturday. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Because the music would go boom, boom. I know. Well, uh, our, our executive producer, Sean, we, he wanted to know, I'm like, is that music in this film? So. <laughs> The answer is yes. Yes. Okay, great. Something for us <laughs> to look forward to. Okay, so speaking of the books, some diehard fans out there might be familiar with the fact that the 1980 movie didn't necessarily follow along with the original book. For anybody who's familiar with Dr. Sleep, does that follow more closely or does it kind of vary in the way that sometimes films do? Well, it plays homage to the book, yes, but it's also with Stephen, uh, Stanley Kubrick's um, film. So it's kind of a mix for both fans. If they love the book, they'll get some of that. If they love the movie, they'll get some of that. I like that about the film. I know, that's, that's <laughs> great. And then of course we even saw in, in the, what we're, the clip we just set up, that hallway scene that is just so haunting. <laughs> you know, as young Danny is riding his little, yeah. you know, scooter down there. Yeah. It, will we see flashbacks or things like that in this one as well? I think there are some surpri surprises that <sighs> fans will enjoy. <laughs> we're watching it. See, I'm talking. <laughs> Michelle, I'm just trying to focus on her, okay? She's like, we're watching it right now. Um, oh my God, I don't know how you did it. And you were mentioning that you went from something bright and happy mm -hmm. to this. Um, and for those people who don't know, you played a young Nala in The Lion King on yep. Broadway uh, when you were just 10 years old. Congratulations. Thank you. You already had such an incredible career. Thank uh, you. What was that like for you? It was so much fun. It was an amazing experience. The music, the dancing, ah, it just felt like you were transported into this world of music and the costumes were just yes. oh, incredible. I loved it. I loved it so much. A lot of people that I talk to, actors, when they do Broadway as well as movies, say that they actually prefer uh, Broadway because of that live yeah. element. And, you know, it's a lot of sitting and waiting in a movie, yeah. right? Well, the, I love both because, one, in film you get multiple takes and you get to do as as many as you want. True. In theater, you do just have one shot. 
But the, both energies are just so amazing and I love it so much. How would you say that actually being on stage or did it really prepare you for this type of role? Well, it was very different. Um, it was a light stage and going from this disturbing film was kind of a pretty interesting switch. But um, I think theater was a great foundation for me to take direction better and learn lines quicker. <laughs> oh my God, you are so awesome and mature. Thank you. I just love talking to Thank you. Thank you. And we're so excited. And lastly, I want to say I know you're originally from Miami. I'm yes. from Tampa, Florida girls. That's so cool. But um, you were filming here, been mm -hmm. here. How was that like for you to see scenes? It was like it was like filming in my backyard. It was great. I could just go home and sleep in my own bed. And it felt amazing. That's awesome. <laughs> right. You're like, I love it. I'm here. And you'll have to be around for our uh, third annual A-Scene Awards next year. Maybe you That's can be so a pre cool. presenter. We would love that. Oh, my gosh. That would be so cool. <laughs> okay. We're going to chat. We're going to chat with your mom, your yeah. publicist, your people. <laughs> Thank you so much. We Thank so you appreciate your time. Me. And best of luck. Thank you. Uh, you can catch Kylie and Stephen King's Dr. Sleep, which is theaters nationwide, Friday, November the 8th. I'll be watching like this. Like <laughs> yes. Thank you again. Thank awesome. you. Woohoo.